Hello, everybody. Um, before I start, I'm going to answer the two questions that I get most. Uh, yes, I met Usain Bolt. And yes, I am the guy that fell at the Olympic Games this summer, if you guys don't know. And the question that everybody asked hurt, yes, it hurt really bad. Um, but I'm not here to talk about the fall. I'm here to talk about my lessons, the lessons I've learned through making it to the Olympic Games. Um, this summer 16 games was not my first. It was actually my second Olympic Games. I made it also in 2012 in London, but that didn't go so well. It was first time jitters and I was a little bit nervous, so I didn't make the semis. But this time I actually did make the semis and in the event of making the semis, I fell at the first hurdle. Um, what I wanna talk about most is perseverance. Um, I'm pretty sure all of you have heard the term or the cliche phrase, you can do whatever you want as long as you put your mind to it. Um, I think for throughout my whole life and throughout your lives as well, we take for granted of the word cliche. We hear it and we're like, oh, everybody talks about that. Oh, everybody says you can make it anywhere if you want to, but it's the truth. Sometimes I think we need to take the word cliche and accept it and say, when am I gonna take the time to actually say, hmm, maybe it's true. If everybody's saying it, then I actually can do it. And I had to go through those experiences. Um, my road wasn't easy. Uh, growing up, I was the bad kid. I was the kid that you know, didn't go to class all the time, got detentions, got suspended. And I never would have thought that you know, I would, growing up and get, growing through all those bad experiences, I never would have thought that I would have made it to the Olympic Games. But as a child, when you're competing or when you're outside playing, everybody wants to make it to the highest level. Whether it's a basketball player, they want to make it to the NBA. Football players, they want to make it to the NFL. For me, I was always fast and I was always racing people. So for me, I always wanted to compete at the Olympic Games. But growing up, of course, like I just said, I was bad and you know, getting suspended here and there. A lot of people didn't think I would make it. Um, and I thrive on proving people wrong, which is perseverance. Um, I've had people tell me I wasn't gonna make it. I've had people, I've actually had a counselor in high school, and this is, um, may sound crazy to you guys, but um, I had a counselor in high school tell my mom that she should withdraw me from school because I will amount to nothing in life. She, oh, she should withdraw me from school, get me a job at McDonald's because I will amount to nothing in life. Um, from that point on, I changed my life. I was like, first of all, you're not gonna tell my mom or me that I'm not gonna be anything in life. And I took it upon myself to um, withdraw myself out of high school. I don't know if you guys are f familiar with Wooden Rogers Education Center, but I went to the Wooden Rogers Education Center and it's a place where I hope none of you guys end up or go. Uh, that's where all the kids that get kicked out of school go, the kids that fight, kids that go to jail and can't stay in school. Those are the kids that go to this type of school and I didn't belong. Um, I had to force myself to go to school every day because it's work at your own pace. You don't have a teacher telling you, hey, do your work. They give you a packet. They say, when you're done with this, you're done with the class. So if you don't finish it, you don't finish the class. And those were the experiences I had in high school, watching fights every day, watching riots. And I had to tell myself every day, listen, I want to run track and I got to make it to the next level, which at the time was college. Um, I eventually got my grades. And my senior year of high school, which is the last year, of course, I ran track. And it was the only year that I had run track. And I had been talented throughout my whole life. So I had to persevere through the, you will amount to nothing in life. Nobody makes it out of Wooden Rogers. If you come out here, it's going to be, you're going to end up like everybody else, which is, which, which is what they do is nothing. Um, I did my work, I got my grades, and I ended up competing. When you're at an alternative school, you can compete for your high school, and which is what I did. I competed for Fort Lauderdale High, and I eventually ended up landing a scholarship to a junior college at, in Concordia, Kansas, in the middle of nowhere. Um, and the reason why I had to go to a junior college is because I didn't take the regular path of high school and get, had good grades and had good test scores. My GPA was low. So therefore, my test scores had to be really high, and they weren't, they were average, so I had to go to the junior college route. Um, at junior college, more perseverance. I'm culture shocked. I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, city of 2.3, almost 3 million people, and the population of Kansas is 2 million people. The population of my town was 1,500 people and 700 people in the school. That's a graduating class in the state of Florida and at any high school. So you guys can understand the culture.
went through of seeing buildings, seeing roads, and going to see dirt roads, cows, and cornfields. It was culture shock. Um, I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to. I didn't want to go the junior the junior college route to begin with because. At that time, I felt like I was too good for junior college, not realizing that that was the path that I had to get, that I had to persevere from to get to the next level, which is D1 and then eventually the Olympic Games. Um, through Cloud, I learned a lot. I met a lot of great people and I ended up loving it. Um, but I had to persevere through some things like getting in trouble and realizing that I'm in a small town, so everything is, micro, everything is a microscope on you and everything you do everybody in town knows. If you speak the wrong way, somebody will know. I'm pretty sure here at, well, probably not at St. Thomas, but at my high school, if you skip class, there's a chance that you might get away with it. That's not happening in a, at a school where there's K through 12 and the most graduating class they have is a class of 20. So you're not getting away with anything. And it's the same way that it was for me at Cloud County. But fast forwarding, I left Cloud County and eventually ended up at Kansas State University um, on a full scholarship. And I was told that I wasn't gonna make anything out of my life. I wish I could find a lady right now, but I, I've yet to find her. But um, I think those words of telling me that I can't do it or that I wasn't gonna be something is what drove me to be the person that I am and making it to the Olympic Games because that was the next that was the next perseverance, was coaches telling me, ah, you're not good enough. You're okay, but you're not that good. Um, I told you guys before, I raced a lot as a kid. Nobody was gonna tell me that they were faster than me. Um, coming out of junior college, I was ranked number two in the nation, and going into division one, I was probably in the top 20, which is okay. Um, and I was at a school where it wasn't known to be a hurdle school, it was a jumps, and decathlon, for those who run track, like a decathlete school. Uh, my coach believed in me, and if anybody here knows what it, what it feels like when someone believes in you, that, that's all it took to drive me. My coach said, look, we're gonna prove everybody wrong, and that was already my thoughts, was proving everybody wrong, which is another experience that I would like you guys to, to take in. You can make it through whatever, as long as you put your mind to it. Again, cliche. Um, my coach told me he believed in my abilities. Um, I persevered through two knee surgeries on my left knee, one knee surgery on my right. Um, I had a blood clot in college. I couldn't compete for the whole indoor season. And when I got back, I was trash. I mean, I was getting beat every, every meet. I was running, um, for, those who you do, for, for those of you who don't know time, I was running about eight seconds, which is like really slow. My personal best is 772. Um, and I remember getting on the bus the meet before conference, and conf it's conference now, um, and then nationals for indoors. I remember getting on the bus after running eight seconds, and I said, look, I'm winning conference next week. And everybody looked at me, it was like, oh, here we go with Jeff, talking all that, talking about what he's gonna do and he's not gonna do it. And I heard somebody say, yeah, whatever, Jeff, you got it. And I was like, all right. So the next week, of course, here comes conference. I told you guys I had been losing every week. I had been running slow. Nobody believed in me but me and my coach. Um, right before the meet, uh, you know, my coach comes up to me and he says, hey, how you feeling? And I was like, coach, I feel like I'm gonna win. He's like, all right, let's get it. And one of my other coaches, he was like, look, I don't know what you're feeling right now, but I hope you know what victory, you should know what victory feels like now before you step out on the track. You should know that you're gonna win before you get out on this track and get in the blocks. You should know that you already won. And I thought about it, I was like, wow, that sounds good. You, you might be right. Oh yeah, it's over for all these guys. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna win this today. And of course, perseverance again, warmed up. They took us out to the track and in the middle of us warming up to go run, they said, hey, the time system's not working. We gotta bring you guys back. So now we're sitting down and we're cold. We're gonna warm up, they don't want us to do anything. And then as soon as I'm taking off my shoes, of course, to walk away, they're like, hey, the system's working again. It's time to go back on the track. So now I got to rush, put on my shoes. All the stuff is running through my mind. And then I got out on the track. I was like, hey, I need a run through. It was like, no run throughs. Just get on the track. I'm going to blow the gun. Let's go. All right. Run is taking mark, set, gun blows. I'm neck and neck with my competitors from hurdle one to hurdle five. 
I come off the last hurdle, and all I can hear in my coach's head is saying, you should know how it feels to win. And I won conference. The only person in my school history to ever win a 60-meter hurdle champion. Um, so again, perseverance, people saying that you can't do it, and I ended up doing it. That summer, um, I ran 13.51, and the qualifying time was 13.55. I get a phone call from a high school coach, and he says, hey, Haiti wants you, Haiti wants you to compete for them in Olympic Games. I can't tell you the joy I had at that moment. I was crying, laughing. I didn't know what to do with myself. It was, it was just a great, it was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that this is really happening. I made it, but, and this is another, um, this is another lesson that I also wanted you guys to learn, is thinking past your goals. Because at that time, my goal was to make it to the Olympic Games. I made it, now what? I didn't think I want to make it to the Olympic Games in medal. I just thought I want to make it to the Olympic Games. So now that I got, I got there, and of course, meeting all the, the bolts, you know, the guys on the USA team, it was great, but then I forgot the main goal, which is trying to win a medal. So when I got to the big stage, these same lights that are shining on me now, that's how it felt standing in front of, I think it was like uh, 100 or 120,000 people. And my coach told me, when you go out there, don't look left, don't look right, don't look up. Just go out there, set your blocks, and you'll be fine. And of course, the first thing I do, not listening, is walk out of the tunnel, and I looked up, and, I'm, and there's a video I wish I could show you guys, but I'm the only person that's like this. Oh my God. Everybody else is setting their blocks, and I'm the only person, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I'm really here. That's what my heart, that's what my heart starts to feel like. And now I get in the race, and my mind is not on racing. I'm, look, I'm focused on, oh my gosh, everybody's here and later looking at me and I didn't make the semifinals. Fast forward to 2016. Throughout those years, a lot of people think that the Olympic Games is our biggest stage. Well, it is our biggest stage, but people think that's the only thing that we do. But there are world championships and many other track meets in between those. So from 2012 to 2016, I had nothing. I hadn't made a world team. I didn't make any CAC games for my country. I didn't win any medals during that time. Everything was out of whack and Everybody thought, all right, maybe it's over for Jeff. I promised myself that I would make it back to the Olympic Games, and this time, I'm gonna make it further than the preliminary rounds. Fast forward to 2016, I qualified. How did I qualify? I can't tell you guys. I just know whenever it's time for me to step up and do something that I said I'm gonna do, it just happens. Because I think it, I talk it into existence, and, um, I remember the track meet last summer, um, it was at, I was in Claremont, and I hadn't been running hot, just like it was in 20, um, 2012, hadn't been running too hot, and I get to the meet, and I say, yo, coach, I'm qualifying today. He's like, all right, Jeff, let's get it. All right, coach, we get in the race, I run the exact qualifying time, which is 1347, the exact qualifying time that it took to make it to the Olympic Games. Now, all cylinders are popping. It's time to get on the track, it's time to go to work. And I went to work and I was ready to run fast. But then I fell. I made it past the preliminary rounds and got to the semis and I fell. Now most people would think when you fall, it's over. I knew that there was a bigger picture, perseverance. I had to make it, I had to finish that race. I fell, the hurdle fell on top of me, it hurt. Everything was going on, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just fell in front of millions of people watching and people that are at the actual games. But I got up and I knew that there were people that said I was never gonna make it this far. There were people that thought I shouldn't, I didn't even belong within the, with, with the caliber of athletes that I was with. So I said, you know what, I need to get up and finish this race. race. And not only that, I had kids watching me. I coach at um, Cardinal Gibbons High School as an assistant track coach. I know all of my kids were watching. What type of example would I be? And this is all the thoughts that run through my mind within a split second. What type of example would I be if I gave up at this very moment? What type of example would I be to anybody to fall and just give up? Well, I got up, I finished the race. I was probably, I probably took 10 minutes to get from the woman, well, nah, maybe like 20 because I had a whole bunch of interviews. 
But by the time I got from the warm up, I mean, the actual track back to the warm up track, I had to be the biggest meme of 2016. Everybody had jokes. My Instagram went crazy. My Twitter went crazy. Memes, jokes, and everybody was laughing. And you know, growing up, I was a jokester, so it, I didn't take it hard. You know, it was like, all right, if it was me and I watched somebody fall, I probably would have laughed too. I probably wouldn't have made a meme, but I probably would have laughed at it too. Um, but outside of the laughing, I got more, you know, praise for finishing the race than anything else. And that night when I got back to my room, um, I got a message on Facebook from, a, from actually three people, but one lady in particular, because the other two were like days later. Um, I had forgot about all the laughter when I tell you guys this story. I opened up the message and it was a lady saying she was just flipping through the channels and she had just stopped at my race. Now, live they, live, they didn't show the race, they didn't show the finish, but I guess at her time, wherever she was, they actually showed me finishing. And she told me she was having suicidal thoughts the whole day. She went from having suicidal thoughts to seeing me finish and she realized I don't have to give up because I seen you, because I seen you finish it drove me to finish and not give up and not myself. Whew. I, only, if only you guys could imagine what I was going through at that moment. Tears rolling down my eyes. I was like, oh my goodness. I can't believe I motivated somebody to this extent. Now, I me remember when I told you guys when I fell, what I was running through my mind was, oh my gosh, there's so much going through my mind. I should finish. I just fell. Oh my gosh. In a split second, but that lady seen me and she, she chose to go on. So again, me persevering through falling, make it, well, making it to the actual Olympic Games, then getting there, falling, then getting up and finishing, lets you guys know you don't ever give up on your dreams. I know it's cliche. I know you hear it a whole lot. I know you've heard everybody say it, but it's the truth. Whatever you put your mind to, you can do. Don't ever, don't ever, ever let anybody limit what you have going on in your life. Whether that be your friends, and if it's your friends, they're not your friends. If anybody's telling you you can't do something, you don't want that person around you because that negativity grows and the thoughts in your head matters. If you think I can't, you, you won't. Um, I tell my students that, my athletes that all the time, I don't want to hear the word can't because if you say it, then that's what's going to happen. If you tell yourself you're going to make it, you will make it. So if you guys don't get anything out of anything that I said today, I hope you guys you know, took away that you can pers persevere through anything and you can put, you can do anything that you put your mind to. Thank you. Thank you.